Welcome to the rocket profile of the N1, the Soviet Union's attempt to launch humans to the moon. The first stage of N1, also known as Block A, had 30 NK-15 engines burning kerosene and oxygen arrayed in a 17-meter base with a center ring of 6 and an outer ring of 24. Each engine provided 1,680 kilonewtons of vacuum thrust, which is around 1,500 kilonewtons at sea level. The NK-15 was 10% more efficient than the F-1 engine used on the Saturn V, the rocket that the United States would use to land humans on the moon, with a sea level specific impulse of 297 seconds and 331 seconds in vacuum. The stage was meant to burn for 2 minutes and 5 seconds. The N-1 faced four failures and no payloads were delivered successfully to orbit. The first failure was an engine fire at 12 kilometers. The second was an explosion on the launch pad. The third was due to bad roll control resulting in destruction 51 seconds after launch. And the last reached engine cutoff of the first stage at 40 kilometers, but the shutdown of the engines ruptured the fuel system which destroyed the vehicle. So the N-1 never got to its second stage cleanly. That stage consisted of eight vacuum versions of the NK-15, also known as the NK-15V, with 1,755 kilonewtons of thrust and a 346 second specific impulse. It was intended to burn for two minutes. While the first stage was more efficient than that of the Saturn V, the use of kerosene and oxygen on this and the third stage, instead of the hydrogen and oxygen on the Saturn V, meant that the N1 was about 20% less efficient here. That, and its higher structural mass due to cheaper construction methods, meant that its payload capacity was less than that of the Saturn V. The third stage was the Block V, and featured four NK-21 engines, each with a thrust of 402.5 kilonewtons, burning for 6 minutes and 10 seconds. A question that often arises about the N1 is, why 30 small engines instead of 5 big engines on the first stage as on the Saturn V? This largely resulted because of the bad relationship between the chief Soviet rocket designer, Sergei Korolev, and the chief engine designer, Valentin Glushko. Accusations by Glushko had led to Korolev being tortured and sent to the Gulag in Siberia prior to the start of the Soviet space program. While they had worked together before, the strained relationship meant that they could not negotiate over different opinions to fulfill the lunar project. This led Korolev to turn to Nikolai Kuznetsov, who primarily designed aircraft engines. The resulting NK-15s and NK-15Vs were highly optimized engines subsequently used on other rockets in their more reliable forms, but were initially not reliable. They were also relatively small compared to the American F-1s because getting so much thrust from a single chamber invites combustion instability, a problem potentially solvable with a large testing budget that the Soviet lunar program did not have. So the N1 had to settle with using 30 engines on its first stage thanks to the program's insufficient budget and, also due to the budget, they could not test the complicated fuel system to manage such an array of engines to prevent the destructive vibrations and oscillations that ultimately led to N1's demise. Also critical to the N1's fate was the fact that its designer, Korolev, died in January of 1966, three years before the first test launch and therefore couldn't use his sway to get the funding that the program actually needed. And with that, thank you for watching this rocket profile of the N1.